I'm Dr. Partha Nandi. Today's episode is brought to you by Heal Your Gut, Save Your Brain, my new book. Want to optimize your health and longevity? Want a memory that works and the healthy body you deserve? Well, this book is your guide. Get it now at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere books are sold. And hey, if you want to enjoy exclusive bonuses created for our podcast listeners, visit HealYourGutSaveYourBrain.com. Every three seconds, someone is diagnosed with dementia. Every six seconds, someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's. This is a, an epidemic. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Partha Nandy, and welcome to the first episode of Heal Your Gut, Save Your Brain. You know, we appreciate you taking the time and joining us. You got lots of stuff to do, so I appreciate it. And I love the fact that, you know, I'm here with my amazing wife, Kelly. Thank and you. I feel like this is, uh, what's, is it Kelly and Mark in the morning? Just very, exactly <laughs> like that. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah so we're like twins. Just, <laughs> we are exactly. Kind of. So Callie's, um, you know, an, um, um, amazing. She's a she's a nurse. She's an RN. She's an amazing um, wife, obviously, and life partner, but also amazing mom to our to our kids. So thanks for taking the time and joining. I know there's a lot going on all the time, and I think, but I think you 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 is the way we live our life and and how how we actually approach things. I think it's it's great that you can talk about that with me and and. It's kind of the first thing that uh, we've done. I'm excited to have you guys here and listening to this. And my guess is that you found this podcast because you're interested in health and wellness and gut health. And, you know, we work and live in health space for years, for 10 years. And we, we, we know so many people, but I really don't know anyone that is as passionate about taking care of people and be taking care of patients and educating people about gut health and overall health and wellness than you are. So I'm excited to help usher in some of the dialogue so that people can really see what I get to see every single day. And let's just face it, it takes guts to be here. It takes guts to look at a podcast that talks about health instead of, you know, I don't know any, I could name a lot of different celebrities that are, you know, colorful to follow. Yeah. And I also love, it's a little, little different take. I love that, that, that I'm working with you and there's, there's so much we do together. It's nice to do this where we can actually talk to people and people can see that. And that to me is I, like, it's, it's an honor for me to be able to, for people to see what we do together, you know? So that's very cool. I, and, and again, we're going to give some great tips, but I think the other thing is that the dimension that you bring to all of the stuff that we do, including our own family. I think I think it'd be cool to be able to talk about that. You know, it's going to be not all scientific and kind of like, this is the 2019 gut study about little bugs and what they did in the Petri dish. But really, like, hey, you know what? Our kids had to go to a birthday party and they had a choice between carrots and pizza. <laughs> and and how do we how do we navigate, navigate that? that? I mean that's real life, right? Yeah. I mean, I gotta talk about the studies and talk, that's all super important. But it's as important as that we as a family have to make those choices every day for ourselves. You know, I'm traveling, I'm at the Delta Lounge and there's just amazing whatever cheesy right. gooey thing. Conglomerate. And then next to stuff. it is like Grapes. the carrot six <laughs> and the salad. And and so those are the choices. And and then to me, if you don't have the reason why you're doing it, it, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you you will not you will not be sustaining it unless you have a why. To me the why is all of us, like you, our kids, and I want to be around and be and thrive. And I think that we talk about this and well, it's Well the two of us have so much we want to accomplish in life. That I want to make sure we stay healthy up until the very end. Hundred percent. We have so much we want to do, and we drive each other, right? I mean, it's just like we hold each other accountable in many different ways. So, yeah. although I think that it's so cool for me to, guts. it's cool for me to talk to people about that because they may have seen me alone doing this, but it's nice to be able to to see what happens after the camera. We get home, yeah. the stuff we talk about when the kids go to bed. You know, it's it's we'll talk about sleep and how important it is. But we struggle because 
we talk about some of this thing, some of the things we're going to talk to you about mm-hmm. after the kids Into are in bed. Into the hours bed. of the night, yeah. So anyway, but but yeah, we'll talk about gut health. We'll talk about how gut health affects the brain, and and so I, I think I think it's going to be important. Speaking of guts, Doctor Nandy, tell us about the impetus behind the book, Heal Your Gut, Save Your Brain. I know it's been a passion of yours for quite a few years. When our life really changed. Yeah, you know, um, well, you know about this, but letting him know is that when my dad passed away, you know, my dad um, was was my first hero when I wrote my first book. It was, it was also directed really with his life story. My dad had a, uh, was a brilliant man, polymer chemist. He invented road reflectors, and you know this, but they don't, is that, you know, when you drive at night and you see these little reflective, reflective tape, tape. I mean, at, it's at like night, pretty badass. You know, you're, you're driving and you don't get off the road. My dad invented that. And so he was just a brilliant scientist. The other thing he invented for the U.S. military was a substance that you can drop down from an airplane and it'll harden within 30 minutes so you can fly around and you can land on a landing strip. He had a big brain. He had a really I, big brilliant brain. Brilliant person. So, and then he was a great cook. He was like a Renaissance man. He could cook. He could sing. I remember my mom went on a cruise with him. And then within like two hours, he had 10, 15, 20 people coming. I've never heard he that could story. Read his, he was, read their palms. Oh, that's so He was sitting there reading his I palms. I did know he read palms. And so everybody, suddenly there was a line like, tell me my fortune. Like my mom's like, what's going on? So that was my dad. And then when he, who had never been hospitalized, really for all intents and purposes, was healthy, had a devastating stroke. So the, the story was, I, my, my sister and I are arguing. You know, we do that sometimes. My sister are, are discussing very strongly. <laughs> passionately, about, discussing, passionately discussing. Passionately discussing about two political candidates. And my dad said, you know, they're all the same. And we left. And that was the last time we, we heard something really coherent from my dad because my mom called and, and you know, he was slurring his speech as, he had one side of his face was drooping. He had a stroke, a devastating stroke. And that stroke robbed him of 10 years of his life. Partha spent the night in the hospital with his dad every day for a year. So it was six weeks in do. the hospital, then the long-term care, and then not long-term care, then the um, Rehabilitation. Rehab, yeah. rehab center. Yeah, but I but I knew that, that you'd understand, you'd get it, and... There was there was something about our souls was uh, you know whatever that means right we're together so you know fast forward he has a devastating stroke really has needed care the rest of his life he missed out on you know his grand grandkids and enjoying it he loved teaching him all the brilliance that's what made me yeah, very it was sad a big mess, yeah. and I said to myself what did I miss because he had no risk factors nothing was wrong and yet. He had this devastating stroke. And so I said to myself, what could we do? What could I have done differently? I was, I thought I was a good doc. I thought I was empathetic. And, and so that then led to me thinking about, you know, what can we do to these so-called kind of healthy people that are having devastating problems? And so, so that at that, at that time, I didn't know what I was going to do, but the research is now, you know, gone much farther than when my dad had a stroke. And, and, and it really dawned on me, the gut is the center. There's so much research talking about the connection between the gut and the brain. Not very intuitive. For those of you who are listening, watching, you know, they're saying, hey, you know what, what does that mean? How, how can the gut be, have anything to do with a stroke, right? I mean, you know, am I nuts? It's, it's so amazing that there's a connection between the gut and the brain. That's why I want to write about it. So other people did not, so others don't have to go through what we did as a family. It's also kind of serendipitous because... When you started the research and writing the book, you know, my dad was the picture of health. I mean, he is the weekend warrior, six pack. I've got some great pictures we'll throw up on video, but he, you know, the muscles everywhere, like super in shape, sharp as a tack, reading five, 10 books every, you know, in every bathroom, there's a different book, a different novel, so quick witted, the first one to get the joke, the life of the party. And now, just a few years later, you know, it's really hard because he's really losing his faculties. And I just think this work is really important for people like him. I mean, he's only 73. You know what I mean? So it's, I just feel like he has a good 20 more years that he could have had. And 
what I try to tell people on our team is it might not feel important to you now, but we have to figure out a way to make it important because I'm telling you one day someone you love is not going to remember your name. And that is a devastating thing to think about. And you were telling us, you know, we were talking with the team. It's like there are products and drugs and prescription medications and treatments for cholesterol or high blood pressure and cancer treatments. And now there's even weight loss medicines, but there is nothing that's going to help your brain. And so I just think this work is really important. That's one of the reasons we wanted to start the podcast too, is because when we started dating, we talked about how we're going to leave the world a better place and how are we going to help teach people what you get to teach your patients one-on-one all the time. And I just, I feel grateful to help usher in those conversations. And I'm super excited about this book and how many people you're going to reach with it. You know, the unfortunate thing was that it was, it was, it was your dad's biggest fear that this happening was his biggest fear. And it's just how things unfolded was, was, was terrible. She's so close to him and, um, and I'll, I'll share this. So when she was young, Craig would write little notes, little post-it notes about how proud he was of her or just small notes of encouragement that she kept. Yeah. All these years. They're in a photo album. He would go in with Callie to have a procedure and they, and, and, and they thought that was her husband because he, is, he looked so good. Yeah. So again, it's it's the same story, right? You look you you look healthy, everything's a okay, and this is happening. And and the, the the fact is that he's not alone. Every three seconds, someone is diagnosed with dementia. Every six seconds, someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's. This is a an epidemic, an epidemic. Every four minutes, someone's dying of a stroke in this country. So it's 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 just a problem that it seems as if people say, well, he or she was just old, and it's just their time, right? And I I, I am here to say that that is not the case. That we can can really thrive. We can have you know folks like my dad, like your dad, thrive and contribute so much to society, right? And I'll tell you, in these times of tumultuousness, we need people that are that are stable and strong, and we're losing so many of these folks because of the fact that mental, mental health is just not being addressed in the way it could be. And I think that yes. if we go and talk about the gut and how we can optimize gut health, we can really make a change. And then this is going to be not some, you know, buy this and buy that. And it's going to be super hard. So we're going to make it simple, you know, but consistent, simple. One of my favorite athletes, right, Tom Brady, he said, you know, in the Tom Brady way, he said, well, you know, I'm not, I just don't feel like I'm that, that much better than anybody else. That's debatable. But let's just go with that. He said, I'm not as good as, I, I don't think I'm better than everybody else, but I'm consistent with my changes, right? I'm consistent with what I do every day. So I offer that. What we'll, what we'll talk about, if you are consistent every single day and make small changes, you can make some monumental differences in your life, yeah. I think. Yeah. It really takes guts to do that, too. It takes guts to put yourself first. It takes guts to to um, focus on, your, on, on something mental. When it's easier, and my parents are probably guilty of this. And one of the reasons they probably are as physically as attractive as they are is because they always focused on nutrition for like how it would help their physique or how they would lose weight or stay fit or exercise. I don't think anybody would think your parents are good looking, looking at you. (laughs) Oh, I I didn't mean that, but they No, I'm just saying though, of course they are. (laughs) But they were super attractive. I mean, my mom was an 80s aerobics instructor. So she would like, we didn't have fat in our house. Everything was low fat. We didn't have butter in our house growing up. So it's a deprived childhood. We didn't. There's some issues. So there was good news with that, but I don't think there was a brain focus. Yeah. And so you really have to um, make those life changing changes now before it's too late. Yeah, and I think and I think the way we approach it is um, I I like to use the five pillars, and you know about this, and we talk about this to our patients. And to me, the five pillars are pretty simple. It's purpose, um, having a purpose in your life, 
Number two is is nutrition, not a diet, right? Because to me, diet's a word for failure because you get on a diet, that means you're going to get off a diet, means the rest of your life is going to be horrible eating, you know, uh, Cheetos and hot Cheetos and stuff like that. So number three is, I think, spirituality. Like it, it doesn't have to be prayer. It can just be whatever you do for spirituality, right. mindfulness. Right. Fourth is, I think, community. And fifth is movement. And movement is not just going to the gym a couple times a week and just, you know, lifting up some weights and then coming home and, and watching Sports Center for the rest of your your, your your the day or watching your 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 you know your phone. It's movement with purpose. To me, it's better that, you know, you, you actually go out there and move with your kids. Yes. Then and that is I think is I think that's how we do. So if we can take that same approach, I think we can also achieve good gut health. And I think that's the approach. It's simple, it's achievable, and, and, and I think anybody can do it with really not a lot of expense. Right. And didn't they used to really focus back in ancient times about gut health being kind of the center? And I think we really went away from that probably, you know, in the 80s, in the Jane Fonda days. <laughs> And so, where you were telling me a little bit about I saw that. Jane Fonda at this. She's uh, amazing. No, I saw it. At, 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 I was in, um, what was it? She's at actually Nat- a great example. I was at Natby in Miami, <gasps> and you know, for the television conference. And literally, this woman comes running out at like 500 miles an hour. It was Jane Fonda. Anyway, she's great. What you were saying, I digress. No, I was just asking, weren't you telling me about ancient, the kind of ancient yeah. philosophies? So I Chinese? think that, so, you know, we think this is brand new because, you know, it's like, we finally found the, the secret to good yeah, health. Yeah, the key. Health. But thousands of years ago, Ayurvedic medicine really talked about the gut being the center of health. So Ayurveda, you know, used in India and, and, and lots, lots of places in Asia, talks about the gut and how you really work with your gut to, 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 to center it. And in Chinese medicine, the gut and the spleen, there you are. That's the, kind of the center of all, all of your health. And so this is not new, but we're rediscovering it. Lots of stuff, right? You guys know this. Lots of stuff that we think about now is a rediscovery of, mm-hmm, of, of, mm-hmm. of techniques and methods. So yeah, it's been around for a very, very long time, but I think we can, we can revisit those and get the best that we can from those cultures as well. I'm a ringer. You know, if you go to these teams, right, these guys have these volleyball tournaments or bowling. <laughs> this is news to me. Okay, let me hear you. bowling and all here. this, right? Well, you know, you get a, <laughs> a you get like a, well, you get like a semi-pro athlete to come into your team. And then they somehow win. So I'm a ringer because I was born in India and I had yeah. all the stuff that I learned. And it just kind of like happened to be that I also I got trained in Western medicine. So me, it was it was a natural evolution of East meets West. So uh, I, I'll, I can I say a story? Can I tell you a story? Yeah, please. So when I was a kid, another reason why I became a doctor was because I nearly died. I'm smiling and saying this. I nearly died when I was about, I think it was six or seven years old, and I had a disease called rheumatic fever. And, mm-hmm. and I told you this. Yeah. Uh, we went to traditional doctors as well as uh, alternative doctors. I was covered in garlic for one day yeah. because that was supposed to take the poison out of you. But what I guess my but point is... who's to say it didn't a little? Maybe. You know? Who knows? Yeah, but it didn't work well for me. I, I don't think. <laughs> you need additional medicine. I just smell yeah. for a long time. <laughs> the, I, you can now see I didn't have That's very many right. friends when That's I was right. a little kid. There's the garlic boy. For the record, boy. you are like have hardly any BO. Okay. You don't. <laughs> I don't know we had to say that. Yeah. I didn't think anybody thought I had BO, but I was talking well, about Well, you were talking garlic. about garlic. Yeah, but I was, I was a Smell. kid. So anyway, so I, 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 they covered me with garlic. But the idea is that we thought of non-traditional medicine as kind of normal. And so when I hear about this stuff... The way I'm a ringer is that I don't have to think, oh, that seems strange. It's not at all. You got a billion people, right, thinking this way. So that it's 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 funny how things work out, right? I became a traditional physician in the Western culture, but I, you know, I was born in India and I heard some of the some of the traditions that we had, and we knew turmeric could could heal. We used to we used to sometimes you know use turmeric when we didn't have first aid kits. We knew that it would heal. We knew that um, turmeric was going to be great as an anti-inflammatory agent because we we it was part of our lives. We didn't need to like listen um, to like a lecture about it. So that's what I mean by a ringer. And so, yeah. also your mother and father both really focused on nutrition. I mean, so much so that your mom would like go to the market and watch them milk the cow to make sure they weren't watering down the milk that they were selling, selling in market. My mom was, I mean, was unique she in that. Was a there are not cool too many lady. people watching the cows. Yeah. 
But she did. Well, they would water it down. I'm sure oh, they yeah. would. I Why know. wouldn't they? They're trying to sell more. But she was great. She she helped. And you're right. They emphasize nutrition and the connections and the stuff. We talk about cumin. We talk about ginger. We talk about turmeric. I think all those things are are are, are ingrained in me. And I think what we're trying to say is those, even the five pillars are back to the basics yep. as to what you were probably raised doing. Um, now we're spelling it out more. And even in ancient times, those things were probably more focused on. And I think we've just really in the industrial era have gotten away from this whole mind, body, spirit, thinking of your the wholeness of you. And we live that here at home. Or we try. <laughs> I shouldn't say. We, we, we do we our do. best to remind ourselves we to do. live in those five pillars and, you know, be present. But I will tell you, I, I had a little piece of cake yesterday. Yeah. Well, we make those choices Gotta as live. well. So it's yeah. almost like you, you, but it's real life that once in a while you have to also live a real life. It does not be that constrained. Um, so I, I think that when you when you look at gut health, right, you look at gut health and you look at the some of the ancient traditions, but we can talk about what the new modern science shows. Before, um, even I'd say even five, seven years ago, this was not mainstream at all. People didn't understand the connection. So the gut is connected to the brain in multiple ways. The the, the most the simplest way is this kind of super highway I call it. It's called the vagus nerve, right? Yeah. The nerve that connects yeah. directly the brain to the gut. And it's it, like a direct chat line. Correct. <laughs> I like that. It is. It's well, a, you've said it. You've yeah. said that. Yeah. So it, it goes right from from the gut into the brain. So they 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 talk and it's bi-directional. The gut talks to the brain. The brain got, talks to the gut. So you have a direct direct access. And then there's this whole this whole area of medicine that's that's really burgeoning, that's really exploding, which is called the microbiome, right? The trillions of bugs in your intestinal system that work with this communication, right? So some of the communication that is happening in the superhighway, the vagus nerve, are produced by these bugs. So they produce, so for example, I'm sure you guys have heard about uh, serotonin, and, and we've talked about the serotonin, the feel-good hormone, 95% of it produced in the gut. That's nuts to me. I don't think normal people know that. So those are the I'm happy normal. Why am I abnormal? Neural transmitters. But anyway, but ninety-five percent of serotonin is uh, is is produced in the gut, and so it, it it doesn't take a big leap of faith to say what's going on. If these bugs are producing the serotonin, they're super important. They're also producing things like GABA, so they're producing actual neurotransmitters, the stuff that these guys, the gut and the brain. Yeah. You know, their communication system. And one thing I have to say, and I, mm -hmm. we're going to talk a lot about it in yeah. future episodes, but it's so fascinating to me. So I'm letting the cat out of the bag a little bit early. When you told me that the third largest ingredient in human breast milk is not digestible by humans, I it blew my mind. So that means that breast milk is feeding, the only thing that can digest it is the bifidobacter, right? Correct. The and bugs in your intestinal the bugs. system. So we, in ancient times, as we're talking, are, have, have been evolved to feed the bug so that the bug can communicate with the brain. See yeah. what we're saying? I think what you're alluding to is that it really what, what, what is actually going on? Are the, are, the, are the bugs actually the ones who are dominating the picture? Meaning yeah, like that, who's zooming who? Exactly. And so who's, <laughs> who's actually in control? So now back to, to how they're connected, right? So if we talk about... So first, the neurotransmitters are there. The second is our immune system. A lot of our immune system, the gut, the gut's lining has the most sophisticated immune system, right? Because why? You get every piece of crap coming through the gut. Yeah. You have, they have, your body has no say in what's coming through. You can put any piece of garbage in there. And lots of food is kind of just, you know, they're, 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 they're almost, uh, what, what should I say? They're, they're actually acting like it's food, but it's not. They put so much garbage in there. Ah. So the body, when it, when you eat it, it resembles food to you because it tastes like it, but it may not be. And the gut has to figure out what goes in, what what's get, goes out, meaning through poop, and then how do you deal with that? And the immune system in the gut is kind of like your CIA, FBI, your local police, your highway patrol, all in one. So they're totally activated. Yeah, if they, but they're but they're patrolling your 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 intestinal system, so it doesn't go in the blood, right? So the difference between 
poop and blood, if you guys can see this, poop and blood is one cell layer thick. So that means within that one cell layer, if it's not working well, all the stuff you eat, which by the time it gets to the intestinal system, resembles nothing like what you put in your mouth, can go into your blood. So the, in, in the immune system is incredibly complicated and the most sophisticated in the gut. And the microbes that you have help to modulate that. That's how important they are. Because we've been together for so long, right? The, the microbiome, those trillions of bugs in your intestinal system and the human body have been coexisting for probably over a million years, right? And, and, and outside of when we were human beings, the bugs have been there for 15 million years. But when you're synergistic, meaning you're living together for so long, you develop ways to help each other. And the bugs help us. We help the bug. How do we help the bug? We give them food, yeah. right? They would be dead without us. Right. So we're like a constant supply of food. We're this big, gigantic, clumsy organism that lumbers around, gathers food for them. And we put it in our <laughs> mouth. We are. We're it's like, so do you know, we going to get some food yeah. and then give it to yeah. the big micro? Again, you know, and who's so, zooming who? Exactly. Like, they- and so these bugs are getting food from us and we're lumbering around the universe getting it. So yeah. if we do that, and so what does it do with the food? It helps us digest it. So if we didn't have the microbiome, the right microbiome, you could have the same foods that you're eating and it may be good or bad if you had the wrong bugs in there they can produce products that d- they don't help us. And that's the key is that we have to be able to, de- we feed them, but we have to feed the right stuff to get the right population, the right, right group of bugs that can help us. We now know, we talked about Alzheimer's, we talked about stroke, that there are certain bugs, and we'll talk about this more in, in other episodes, but there are certain types of bugs that help you if you have a stroke. Amazing, right? Um, and then certain types of bugs that are there. There's almost, there's something called an Alzheimer's gut that you can see certain species of that. bugs mm. that actually can exist in, in a higher proportion when you have Alzheimer's. That's how important these suckers are. Okay. So that's why it's important so to talk about it. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and so that's those. why we're talking about this. Yeah. And what's nice is that you don't need to, you know, Call now and spend nineteen ninety nine, and then uh, three months later, it's not that. It's simple choices you yeah. make every day. It's getting so, back to the basics. Yeah, and yeah. I think that. So we we talked about the the microbiome, and we talked about what they're producing neurotransmitters, their 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 you, you know, your immune system, and how it functions is super important, and how, and what kinds of bugs you have and what they do. The third one we talked about is also digestion of foods, right? We our carbohydrates, some of the some of the nutrients that we put in there. Can you believe that some of the bugs actually make B vitamins and K vitamins? So it's 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 really a much more complex picture, but the solutions are simple. So this is how we can modulate our gut. So we can give it not just the food, even movement. Can you believe this? So we talked about the five pillars, right? Movement and purposeful movement can change the environment of your gut microbiome, hence supporting the ones you want. So you have this thing called energy homeostasis. So when you work out and you actually move, the blood supply to the intestine is completely different than when you sit on your yeah, butt, I'm sh- pick up the phone that. and call, is this DoorDash? Yeah, DoorDash. I like like three double cheeseburgers and french fries and I like a big milkshake. Thank you. And then you go back to, to your, phone your phone with your TikTok. And, and I think that they should do something revolutionary. Are you ready? Let's hear it. They should get in the damn kitchen, man. Yeah, that's get right. Get in the damn kitchen, start that's cutting right. some stuff. That's right. Start making stuff. Yeah. Our kids, by the way, if you ever want to come to our house, they are. Whenever, here. yeah, they are. <laughs> come here. In a little bit, our four year old's probably going to come I'm and make sure. a coffee. But, for but he, that's the key. Yeah. So th- these kids make the food. And, and when is it, when does it taste the best? When you make it yourself. When they make, they make it, it, darn it. My sister came to visit and she was like, oh my God, your four-year-old is like making an espresso. I'm like... Espresso. But he also does other things. You know, he does any any cooking that he can with his, Love it. With his orange safety knife. Yeah. So the, we what we're asking people that are young or old is to get out there and actually cook. Because when you cook, that brings you joy, right? I think to me, it brings you joy. It's creative. And then you also it know... It really does. I do think we are creative beings. And if we don't have that outlet and you can use that in your food 
I think we get depressed if we don't have that outlet for for our creativity. And you can do that. And you know what's in your food. And you're with your family. That's tribe time. And you're eating healthy. So that's your nutrition. You're like cutting out. You're like creating an environment of hitting all the pillars just by By shopping. Wow, that's really hard. Like going to the grocery store. How is that such a chore? You're like shopping. Like that is fun. It's actually fun to shop. So it's all the kind of way, and you talk about this. It's the way you think about it. Is it going to be painful and horrible picking out the best cauliflower? Or is it going to be, wow, what a delight that I get to go to this beautifully lit, extremely clean grocery store store and pick out whatever fruits and vegetables I want or farmer's market, which would be even better. Versus if we think about people from other countries that just don't have that. You know, but I'll tell you, it's, it was a lot of fun when I was in India to to go to these Market. vegetable markets and pick it out. But you, but you're right; it's a mindset. But you're talking about young folks, right? Yeah. And young people that have that that have been brought up and grown up with convenience, not knowing what's in their food. You know, you're absolutely right. We can hit all the five pillars. We try to do it as much as we can when we when we cook. But also, you know what's in it. I tell my patients all the time. You know, I, I treat a disease called Crohn's disease and they say, what can I do? I said, the first thing you can do is cook and find out what it is that you're putting in your food. Because you go to a restaurant, right? And you, and it comes out and it looks beautiful, but you have no idea. We talk no about idea. this. No idea. First of all, you, you, can't, you can't even maintain a healthy weight if you go to a restaurant because you, you don't cannot. know what they put in it, how much butter how much or oil, grease and crap they put in. How much salt. So you, know, you need to know. I tell me, just by cooking, you achieve amazing things that all of all the things you talked about plus the fact that you know and and so to me one of the biggest things you can do for your gut health is to be able to know what's in your food and cook and pick whole foods just whole foods and pick a variety it, it's great to eat the same thing every day some people love that but try to have a variety of stuff that you can't pick from the color we tell the kids the to be risk takers with food. yes yeah. yes and, and eat the especially rainbow. sean i love i love when i talk to sean about being a risk taker sean's our middle He's son our picky eater well, we don't want to call him out now, but I guess we just did. But the thing is that Sean, we tell him, and but he's trying, and he we trying. make the attempt. But think about it. he eats lentils and broccoli. He's not a bad eater. We just want him to we eat have dal more. and broccoli literally every single day. Yeah, thing. and but we want him to be, more, be a more diverse eater, right? Have peas and, and things like that. So I think I think my, my my patients ask me the same question. They go, "So what can I do, right, to improve my gut health? And how, what can I do to improve my?" my you know the my gut that, that that's bothering me and so it's it's important to tell people it, it is really about making these steps every single day mm-hmm. right i mean mm-hmm. and then and then trying to instill these these habits all the time and and i think we're going to talk about this in our next episode which is about gut health but i think it's really important to to to, to tell them make small steps every single day right Wouldn't i you read agree? this amazing book when i was in college it was by jim Rohn. And he said, it literally changed my life because I was like, you know, probably drinking more alcohol than I should, certainly more than I do now, which is like nothing. But um, I was, I just was living, I was doing the Taco Tuesday and Pizza Friday kind of thing. And what he said was, it's not a candy bar a day that keeps the doctor away. It's an apple. So if you just make that one choice, every time you go to grab the candy bar. If you say, "Mm, no, I'm going to get a banana. No, I'm going to get an apple. I'm going to get an orange. If you just make that one choice, it will completely change your life. Change your life, revolutionize it. And this is what we've done. I mean, every time I'm like, well, what should I eat? I'm like, you know, I'm going to cut a watermelon. I mean, I'll eat, you know me, I will eat a lot of She does. So I I, I catch her. She's got this like giant (laughs) bowl of of cantaloupe and stuff, just like (laughs) randomly, which is awesome. Because guess what? Guess who sees that? Our kids see that. Our kids see that. Us kids see you doing that. And it matters. So the you know people ask you, what's the one thing I, that you can do? I think one of the one one of the best things you can do is add fiber to your diet. Yeah. You know, and just add fiber to your diet. If you can do that, it 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 does wonders. Why? Because number one, it feeds those little bugs in your intestinal system, right? So fiber is the preferential food for the microbiome. So. If you have fiber, can mean multiple forms. Right? There's people talk about soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. So soluble fiber is a thing that is soluble with water. Amazing, that's what it's called. And insoluble, it's not. So soluble fiber. My my four year old loves peas. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. My my 
son, Partha, loves apples, so does Sean. That's part of it. And it also helps, get this, people talk about, you know, I need to have an injection in my body to be able to lower my blood sugar, plus I'm going to get thin, right. you know, these injections right. now Fiber. and medicines. But guess what? Soluble fiber does control your blood sugar as well nice. by decreasing the speed at which your 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 body is moving food and nutrients through. So it decreases the absorption and controls your blood sugar. It also decreases your cholesterol by the, by by binding to the fatty acids. So when you have fiber like that binds to fatty acids, it can actually reduce your cholesterol. So you can do simple things. It's not always drugs. Listen, I prescribe my good share of medicines when you need to, but it's not always medicines. And we... Unfortunately, in the West, in Western medicine, we say, "Doc, give me a pill." Yeah, make it go away. Give me an injection. Yeah, don't don't make me don't don't give me that stuff about diet. Just give me a pill. I'm good. Or like you know, so they always want me to give me give them a medicine instead. And if you get soluble fiber, and then when they get constipated, you know, one of the biggest things that people come and see me for. You know, and they're embarrassed to talk yeah. about well, bloating, go, constipation. Like, you know, only do a couple of times a week. Sometimes a couple of times a month. And nobody's talked to them about insoluble fiber, right? So one of the things we have, uh, what's one of the favorite things we have every Thursday? This is a quiz to see if she remembers what we eat. Every Thursday, cauliflower. Cauliflower. <laughs> I got it right. Cauliflower. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. So cauliflower. Alu gobi. We make alu gobi because so we're vegetarian on Thursday. Anybody so we that's Indian alu, food or is Indian is watching this that's or is right. hearing this so is alu gobi. So alu, uh, cauliflower is an insoluble fiber, right? Wheat, wheat bran is an in, insoluble fiber. So you And what does that do? It helps you to be able to be more regular and not, and poop more instead of taking a laxative. People come to me, they've already taken 10 laxatives, but nobody's talking. a lot them. of young people suffer from this too. Oh, I mean, everybody, everybody, yeah. everybody, mm-hmm. everybody, young, old, in between, <laughs> you see them kids, all. everybody. Oh my God, constipation. And they're embarrassed. And they're embarrassed to talk they about it. They think like, oh, yeah, I know you want to hear about this. I said, do you know what I do? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you should see what we talk about during the dinner. Oh boy, I had a gastroenterologist at the table. Jeez. I grew stuff. up speaking to my dad. He would always be like, well, let's not talk about that at dinner. <laughs> like, I'm married to a poop doctor. Yeah, you know, we so, talk about everything. So I think that if you could just do the fiber with the soluble and insoluble, that's a, that, to me, that's a great, great start. And if, because those are called prebiotics, right? Yeah. We talk about you know, how you can make changes in your in your in your gut health. The prebiotics feed the good bacteria and the good bugs. And by the way, the trillion bugs are not just bacteria. We talk about bacteria a lot, but the bacteria, virus, fungi, protozoa, all kind of hung in there and they're having a huge party. It's like a concert. It's a concert with all, you know, the horn section and, and, and you know, I guess the strings and all that. And the problem is, to me, a, a dysbiosis or a screwed up microbiome is when like the horn section just doesn't show up. Mm-hmm. And then it sounds like you're like, something's wrong here. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens to your gut. Something's wrong. I mean, we are now, this is embarrassing, but we go to a restaurant and if we don't eat well, we know it immediately. 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 Well, to be honest with you. This is like uh, the, the movie Frozen, right? We're finishing our own sentences. <laughs> Remember that? See, anybody that kids has watched Frozen know what I'm talking about. Yes. What is that she said? Remember that song? What did she say? Um, where we finish each other's sentences. sentences. Yes, that's it. Jinx. Jinx. Jinx again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I digress a lot. Um, no, we, so, you know, we've become on this major health initiative for a good 10 years. And Ever since in the beginning, married. yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the beginning, it was tough. I, I had a hard time transitioning to not wanting to eat out. Not a lot, because I never ate out a lot. But even, you know, once a week, twice a week. And I just remember thinking, gosh, it's like so much work. And now I just have a completely different frame of mind about it. And I don't really love eating out. So the only time we do is when we're we're traveling. And even then we try to get the kitchen. Again, what we talked about, consistent changes made every day. Mm -hmm. If you, and it's okay if you, you know, once in a while, but what happens if you go for a week on vacation and then every time uh, you're on vacation that you you sit there and eat crap. It's but I think difficult. people think, oh, I ate healthy and I ate a salad. And now a salad is definitely better than a hamburger. But I do kind of a think piece of to lettuce my, I think, with one tomato. Yeah, right. That's what the I, I like. I remember going to it's I think like it was a Applebee's. Side salad. Come on, it has like to, one you know, tomato. Kill Applebee's there, but it's. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> The green lettuce. lettuce. The what is that? Tiny. Head of lettuce. We don't even that's buy it. I don't even know what it means. That's what it. It There's is. no other greens. But at least it's better than nothing. But what I'm saying is that we try to really not, even when we go out, we feel it. These restaurants are not there to help you. They're there to make they're a not? profit. They're thought, there to, they're, they're not going to get I thought they're there to make my gut better. For organic vegetables. This is a revelation. So. That restaurants are there to make money. They are. You and good for first. them. You heard it here first. Yes. So, and the standard American diet Correct. is... The sad diet. Sad. Standard and it's sad. American and diet. diet. And so what we now have, we actually feel it when we go to a place where we know the ingredients aren't, and it sounds, I don't know what it sounds like, but we can feel it. But what happens is that when you consistently make these changes in your diet, you actually can tell when you're, when you're actually not, not following it. Oh yeah. And Absolutely. So we, right away. We try to try to be consistent as, as much as possible and, and, and make those changes and, and not, not try not to as much as possible get away from, we follow the 80, 20 or 90, 10 rule, which means that 80 to 90% of the time, right? Yeah, we do, 90, we do the right sure. thing. 10% of the time there's a birthday party or something that's going on. So we do, we, we also are very heart open with that. It's like, if it's someone's birthday, you're definitely going to have a slice a of, of cake, cake of and you're going to, you know, that is part of life. tribe. Like you're not going to be like, no, I don't eat that cake. You know, it's just, you might not you have to eat. You want to be that person. We've been there. Yeah, like, we don't want to be, you get I'm a, not a you, you send an invite, I won't eat that. You send an invite to a party, they give you like a list of foods that, that they're Yeah, we don't do that. We, yeah, we just show up <laughs> and we eat what we like and we but don't But you know what I'm yet. talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to do that. Oh, man. So you talk a lot about gut health and you've been teaching us a lot about that. I'm sure you talk to your patients all about these kinds of things. I never get to see that kind of color um, and that those conversations. Talk to us about a patient that you've seen and treated and how you've kind of trained them, coached them and how they maybe come out the other side. Yeah, so, you know, we do this every single, I do this every single day. So um, there's, there's an example that's also in the book and it was a patient of mine with severe anxiety and depression. So to the point where it's, where it was disabling, mm -hmm. meaning that they could not function, you know, at work, they, they, they'd have trouble going to, to going out to events and, 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 you know, their whole fa their, with their family. And so she was having issues to really function. And so she came to me and she didn't come to me for that, right? She came to me with gut issues. But when she talked about, as we talked more about it, it was clear that, that some of the anxiety and depression was, was really crippling her. So yeah. I, I recommended same things that we, we talked about. Number one is to really be able to make incremental changes in her diet to, to avoid as much as she could processed foods, avoid bad fats, not just bad carbs, but bad, bad fats. Um, so to me, a pepperoni pizza is like the, the double the, whammy, the Triple. absolute worst, right? Yeah. You got bad carbs, bad fats, bad everything in there. So try to avoid bad fats, but don't, don't do it all at once. And then I added pro and prebiotics with her food as well as a supplement. And doing that consistently over several weeks, obviously she came to me for GI symptoms. That, that really got so much better within four weeks. But something amazing happened is that her symptoms of anxiety and depression within that time started to get better. Mm -hmm. She was, and this is, this is with also decreasing the dosage of her medications that she was taking. That's for those. awesome. So I, That's I awesome. think it's very really rewarding when you talk about people who come in and they have symptoms that are not even, that are not even related in their mind, but when you connect them, Hey, you got, you got this bloating and discomfort uh, in your lower abdomen, but you also have these behavioral issues or psychological issues and mental health issues and, I mean, time together, it's it's amazing because people want, you know, if at all possible, to go to the root cause, right? And if That's we can right. get the root cause, and often it's the gut. We're not talking about a panacea. It's not every single person, but it's a large percentage yeah. of people that we can that we can help. And I think it's it's enormously uh, helpful for people to know that that there's hope, that there's hope that it doesn't always have to be this way. That that you're not going to be um, stuck with the life that's that's filled with lack of hope and and no joy to me the first book that we wrote uh, we, we you know i wrote was you know the living a joyful life right ask dr nanny the five steps to living a joyful, joyful life, life. Yeah. and it's and we forget about that it's not just about surviving or or just persisting and and just being there it's like we have everything we have in our present. power 
to be having a living a joyful life. That's right. And you can go through your gut, which is awesome. Yeah. And it's interesting that people will like put all this crap in their bodies. And then let's say it comes through as a gut health problem, but also it could be like an eczema problem or some skin problem. And then they have to buy the expensive creams or the medicines to put on the skin. If they just looked at that root cause and they started eating and going kind of back to the basics, like you talked about the ancient times, I just think it would save a lot of people a lot of grief because they're spending a lot of time and energy on the treatments for the things that the what they're eating is causing them. 100%. If they just went and said, you know what, let me buy my groceries, let me go to a farmer's market, let me chop some vegetables with my kids. And make the but how many dermatologists home? are telling them that? So you go, you have eczema, you have something on your skin, you go to a dermatologist. They're not telling them that because you're probably seeing them for two and a half minutes. Maybe, maybe one and a half minutes. Because unfortunately, American medicine is turned into that, right? So who's going to talk to you about your gut health? They're not. And so that's why this is such, to me, this is so important to talk about. Because the fact is, if you don't talk about this, who is going to? And now, now you know that, you go to your dermatologist and say, hey, can I maybe make some changes in my diet before slapping on that cream? By the way, that cream kills your skin Bio. microbiome. <laughs> you know, people don't talk about the skin microbiome. Yeah. You slap that thing on and, and the, your skin microbiome dies. And it's amazing that you're not getting better. Maybe a second cream or maybe the cream on top of a cream and then you take a pill. It just continues on. And I'm not exaggerating because if you look at the creams that's, that are out there, they are like an atomic bomb on your skin microbiome. Yeah. Obviously, we're talking You've about the gut. You've always been so passionate about what we put on our skin, oh, which is totally another episode. It's the largest episode. organ in our yeah. body, and it's exposed to it. And we put all kinds of lathering crap all over it. And, you know, in the skin industry, very rarely, now they're starting to look at the skin microbiome. What the it's, fuck is this that? This is the thing. <laughs> since, I've been, since I've been married to this woman, my mouth has gone to hell. I, it is. I kind of She's taught me words that okay. I have not heard before. So, Dr. And Nandy. this is tough. <laughs> because I, I, this, I think it's time for people to know what's really going on. I am not the one who, who has who is degraded the language in our family. <laughs> it's it's me. you, trashy Callie. Well, I do know that if you don't That's have anything smart to say, you use these you know four-letter words. So Dr. I've got to get smarter. Doctor Danny and trashy Callie. Hashtag trashy Callie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but you what do we have? To, okay, what do we have to look forward to the next? More episode. trashy Callie stuff. Yeah, we have a lot. She's gonna be to talk cussing about. like a sailor. That's right. You have looking every, forward to every, more four letter words. They'll be like bleep, 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 bleep. It's good. You should be a rapper. Guts is a four letter Have you thought about word. becoming a rapper? Because you could you could do that and you could get away with it and to be bleeping everything out. I would not On the be next good at episode, that. we'll be talking about gut health because people use that term and just throw it out there and nobody knows what it means. Because it's like, what does that mean? And then they're just like, oh, this We're is We're going to dive health. deeper into microbi the microbiome. Well, yes. And also what actually defines gut health. Because often there are people selling potions and lotions and this and that to make it all better. You know, you can put like stuff in your coffee that'll change your light. All right. kinds of very interesting things that, that may or may not have some facts. So we'll talk about that. Um, in more detail. And I think it's important to be able to set the set the ground rules for that, at least from our perspective. That sounds fun. We'll have a lot to say and do then. Out. We'll see you guys the next time. Hopefully more cleaner, cleaner language. Yeah, right. No more time. four letter words. But like I said, PG-13. guts is a four letter word. Although so. you know Deadpool became the the one of the highest grossing movies like cursing and when killing. When are we gonna say that? See that? Well, as soon as we're done with this, I'm sure <laughs> Trashy Callie is out. Well we have all these kids that can't see it yet. Kids. I'll, yeah, we're so, always seeing kids awesome. movies. Awesome we'll be kids. seeing all we just saw um Inside Out though. Or Inside Out 2, we've so seen uh, That's Despicable talking a lot before. about mood and anxiety. This is where the dad embarrasses the kids. When the kids say, by the way, dad, it's, you know, what are you doing? Because I'm laughing hysterically and my kids tell me <laughs> that we're, we're embarrassing. Embarrassing them yes. in the theater. Yeah, that's good. Though. More of this to come on the next episode of Heal Your Gut, Save Your Brain. Make sure you never miss an episode by following on Apple Podcasts or subscribing wherever you listen. And if you want to learn more, get a copy of my book, also titled Heal Your Gut, Save Your Brain, available everywhere books are sold October 1st. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. If you're ready to take control of your health, don't miss my new book, Heal Your Gut, Save Your Brain. Learn how to improve your gut health, prevent chronic illness, and sharpen your mind with easy-to-follow advice. This book is the blueprint for a healthier future. Get it now at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere books are sold. And hey, if you want to enjoy exclusive bonuses created for our podcast listeners, 
visit killyourgutsaveyourbrain.com.